Now, it's been a while since we featured any running shoes from the Scott brand, and actually the last time they were on the channel was when we took our first impressions look at their first ever carbon-plated road shoe, the Speed Carbon RC. The shoe performed pretty well out on its first run. I did have a few sort of heel slippage issues when it came to the upper though, but we're following a similar pattern today. So Scott, the brand are back on the channel and we are taking a look at their first ever carbon plated trail running shoe, the Ultra Carbon RC. So let's jump into the video and find out how these perform. Welcome back folks, hope you all had a fabulous Christmas full of festive cheer and thanks for joining us for another video. Uh, actually it's our first first impressions video since the other side of Christmas and really looking forward to getting out on a run, hitting the trails in a brand new trail shoe. Now if you watched our previous video when we went out for a Boxing Day fun run, you'll know that I picked up that nasty bug that was going around and in fact we both picked it up so myself and Liga have been ill for a while and that was actually my first run back after two weeks weeks of no running. It went okay, I felt all right, you know, as I went through the run, my lungs kind of freed up a bit. So it's gonna be really nice to get out on a longer run today, around 10K, seven miles, and give them a thorough testing, and hopefully they'll be all right. So before we get running, let's just go through a few of the stats when it comes to the Ultra Carbon RC, and we're gonna break down the construction in a bit more detail. So uh, obviously, whenever the words carbon fiber plate are mentioned with a running shoe, you know it's gonna be pretty expensive, and unfortunately, that is the case with these. So the new Scott Trail Shoe retails in the UK for a pretty pricey 210 pounds. Another thing that shocked me was the weight because Scott are kind of pitching this shoe at the ultra distance sort of racing market. So I expected it to be a reasonably light running shoe actually weighs in a pretty hefty 341 grams in a UK 9.5, so a lot heavier than I was expecting. It runs off a five mil offset, so we've got 25 mil on the heel and 20 mil under the forefoot. When it comes down to the construction, Scott claimed that this is one of their most technically advanced trail running shoes today, and a lot of that development has been put into the Carbide X plated Go Faster midsole. So you get a really good helping of Scott's kinetic light foam, and this has been designed to feel light and cushion, but to offer high levels of performance and comfort over distance. That's been paired up with a carbon plate design with some pretty unique benefits. So Scott actually claimed that the performance of that plate will adjust depending on how much effort the runner puts in. So if you up the pace, you're running a lot quicker, that plate should feel nice and stiff, nice and rigid to give you that forward momentum. But then if you come across an area of more technical trails where you have to slow down, then it should feel a lot more flexible. So making you feel maybe a bit more nimble and a bit more connected underfoot. Coating that midsole is Scott's brand new Ultra outsole. And you can see what I mean by the overuse of the word Ultra within the running industry. Uh, it's not the most aggressive of lug patterns, not a lot of details about it. I measured the lug depth. It's around three to 3.5 mil. So it might struggle a bit out there on today's run because it hasn't stopped raining for about three days here in Cornwall. To be fair to Scott, they do say that this outsole is best suited to fast, smooth summer trails of any speed or any distance. And I'm not sure how many of them we're gonna find out on today's run. And finally, moving up to the upper, and we've got this twin layered engineered mesh construction going on with lots of tiny perforations worked all over the shoe for increased breathability. Quite a stripped back design on that gusseted tongue. There's a little bit of padding there, but not a lot. But we do get a lot more padding around the ankle collar and in the heel cup, but it is quite structured. It's quite stiff and quite rigid. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how comfortable that is out on today's run. And finishing off the upper, we've got some TPU structural overlays wrapping around the heel, working down to the midfoot, around those lace eyelets, and wrapping around the toe box, just to give the upper a bit more substance, but also help when it comes to durability. And then it's all presented in Scott's very well-known black and high-vis yellow colorway. So there you have it folks, the brand new Scott Ultra Carbon RC. And there's elements of this shoe that I understand, but there's also some things I'm not quite sure about with the weight and the balance of the shoe being sort of top of my list. Uh, I've learned over the years never to judge a book by its cover. There's been plenty of shoes that I'm not fully convinced by and then I get out, I get running in it and it is a pleasant surprise. And I've always got on with the Scott running shoes that I've used previously. So there's only one way to really find out. Let's get these on our feet and let's take them through spin. So as expected, 
expected, it's pretty wet, pretty muddy, and pretty slippy here in Tahidian. Already, I've discovered that the outside is definitely not set up for muddy conditions. Again, like I mentioned at home, Scott already say that this shoe is set up for dry, fast rolling trails. So I'm not gonna to be too tough on it when it comes to muddy conditions. And I'm gonna try and find some firmer, drier trails to test that outsole on. When it comes down to fit and sizing, I'd say it's definitely true to size like all the Scott shoes I've ever run. I feel really well held around that midfoot and I've got good length in the toe box, but maybe there is a little bit of slippage in the heel cup. It's only very slight, so I might stop in a minute Retie the laces just to see if I can improve that heel lockdown. Great to be back into Hiddy Woods today, seeking a bit of shelter from the wind and the sort of heavy downpours. But the plan today, nice sort of steady 10K, seven miles. Obviously the lungs are still recovering from being poorly. So let's crack on, let's get this run done. <laughs> Okay, four miles into the run and we're just about to get another heavy downpour. So I'm gonna be quick. Luckily, I've got the Soar Ultra jacket on. Perfect for this type of weather, super breathable because it's really mild, but it's got tape seams and that brilliant uh, water resistant layer on it. So it gives really good protection in weather like this. I also think I was maybe a little bit harsh on the level of grip and traction from the outside because it's actually coped with everything else really well. It's very wet and muddy in the woods today. And it was only on the deep bits of mud where I felt I was losing a bit of traction. On everything else, it's been really good on the wet leaves, the wet roots, the gravelly trail, and even on some of the muddy tails, I've felt nice and secure underfoot. Hopefully the rain will clear soon. I, I don't know what's happened to me. I've become a fair weather runner, but uh, lungs are feeling really good. So I'm gonna probably get a, a longer run in today. I was gonna try and do 10K, seven miles. I might get eight or nine in, depending on how I feel. So far, so good. So I think it's starting to, slow down rain wise and there's a bit of blue sky behind me so let's just get out there let's get this run done i don't know a little bit of rain's not gonna hurt me We are done. That was an awesome run. So I set out to do sort of 10K, seven miles, not knowing how my lungs and my body would feel and obviously running a new shoe, ended up doing 10 miles. So that is a thumbs up from me. Body felt great, lungs felt good. So onwards and upwards now. Uh, and the shoe ran pretty well in some challenging underfoot conditions. That's for sure. It was definitely thoroughly tested out in the woods today, but let's get home. Uh, let's break down the performance in a bit more detail. It's always a good feeling when you sort of plan on going out for sort of 10K, seven miles and everything's feeling good, your body's working well and you end up doing 10 miles and that's exactly what we did today. And I've got a 13 mile run planned with John tomorrow on the Jolly Roger route. So uh, fingers crossed, it looks like I've kicked the illness to the curb and we can get back to some sort of quality, consistent training mileage. Considering Scott, I've designed the Ultra Carbon RC for those sort of dry flowing summer trails and uh, it's definitely looking a little bit Bit worse for wear after today's run. It actually handled those tricky underfoot conditions in the woods today pretty well. Uh, obviously, in the real boggy, muddy sections, I definitely lost a fair bit of traction. But on everything else, that outsole actually performed better than I thought it would. The upper felt nice and comfortable straight out of the box. Uh, I did have my concerns about that thin design tongue. It's got very little padding. I shouldn't have because it was actually really comfortable across the top of my foot. And it gave me a real nice secure sort of lockdown around my midfoot. Uh, once I stopped on the run, worked them laces up from the bottom, I just hadn't tied them tight enough. So once I got them locked down a bit tighter, that stopped that slight bit of movement I had in the heel cup. So overall, the upper of the shoe fit in my foot shape really well. I could definitely feel that they've been designed for those faster summer rolling trails because whenever I picked up a flatter section in the woods there, the Ultra Carbon RC kind of sprung to life and it was a lot happier in that type of environment. Uh, not that it was bad on the other trails, but I could just feel that 
evolved rocket geometry and that plate in the midsole a lot more and it actually felt very efficient running on the flat stuff. The kinetic foam in that midsole felt okay underfoot, maybe a little bit firmer than I was expecting for a sort of performance driven race day shoe and it actually felt very similar to the sort of road equivalent, the Speed Carbon RC. So we got a very similar geometry, similar level of cushioning and obviously you've got that plate worked into that midsole construction. Uh, it was comfortable but it didn't really return as much energy as I thought it would. Uh, obviously it was our first run in the shoe so it might just take a bit of bedding in, a bit of softening up. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes over the next few weeks. When it comes down to the weight, once you've got it on and you're out on the trails running, it does run a little bit lighter than that 341 grams. I personally would still like to see it closer to 300 or maybe just dipping under 300 grams and a lot of that weight does seem to be in that midsole construction. So it does feel a little bit bottom heavy. Maybe not the most balanced trail shoe that I've run in. Uh, you know, I would think it should be lighter, more nimble and a bit more exciting because that's the type of feeling we want from those shoes that we're going to be lacing up on race day. All in all, it wasn't a bad first run in the shoe, but maybe I was just expecting a bit more of a dynamic racy feel to it. And it would felt a bit more like a sort of daily trainer rather than a carbon plated go faster shoe to me. Uh, and it really reminded me of the added that's Argovic Ultra that we tested out at the end of last year. Uh, very similar weight, midsole performance and fit. And if I'm honest, I wasn't a massive fan of that Adidas shoe. Although the upper on this is a lot more comfortable. So it was a bit of a mixed bag out there on today's run. Super happy to get a nice steady 10 miles in my legs after feeling poorly. And the performance of that outsole, even though it is quite a shallow lug, was much better than I thought it would be in challenging, wet, muddy conditions. But I was hoping for maybe a slightly livelier, more responsive sort of exciting ride. Uh, obviously, this is our first run in the shoe, so it's going to be good to get some more miles in them to see how they bed in over time. So that is a wrap on another first impressions review at the channel. Really hope you enjoyed it, guys. Really hope you found it helpful. You know what to do if you did. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only takes a second to do just by clicking on that little box there down in the corner, but it is a massive help to the channel. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that bell icon as well, because then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content. Right, I'm off to get everything ready for tomorrow's run. So we're going to be up pretty early and I'm going to be rocking these bad boys uh, out there tomorrow. So this is the Exodus Ultra Run Shield. Just managed to get hold of them. It's going to be really interesting to see how they perform tomorrow because it's definitely going to be very muddy and very wet. And I'm taking the cameras along as well. So you'll get to see those conditions. So this isn't a waterproof shoe but it is a water resistant shoe so really interested to see the levels of protection it gives me from the elements uh, in tomorrow's wet conditions but for now guys thanks for watching it's really appreciated thanks for all the amazing support you give the channel we'll be back here very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running now it's been a while since we featured any running shoe <coughs> Thanks for joining us for another video and it's actually our first impression uh, uh, yeah. I thought it'd be reasonably light, but actually weighs in a pretty hefty 200. <laughs> uh, it runs off a four, uh, no, not a four mil, it's a five mil. <laughs>